Hello students, welcome back. Hi, my name is Professor Bhavan Gandhi and I am a Chartered Accountant and Company Secretary by Qualifications. And today, we are going to start with the revision of Chapter number 3, Capital Structure. So guys, I would like to welcome you all to this JK Shah Classes Inter CA Revision Series. So basically, my dear students, before we start with the revision of this particular chapter, let me quickly revise the paper pattern for financial management. As you all are aware that your financial management is your group 2 paper 8 which constitutes your 60 marks and the paper pattern is that your question number 1 is your compulsory question which will be for 20 marks and which can have 4 sub questions of 5 marks each with no internal options available and from your question number 2 to question number 6 out of the remaining 5 questions, you have to attempt 4 questions constituting 10 marks each. So guys, together, question number 1 for 20 marks and remaining 4 questions, 10 marks each, 40 marks, your paper will be for 60 marks. Guys, one of the question which can be asked as an optional question can be your theory question and I would not advise you to leave theory as an option. You should definitely consider read the theory which is given to you in your JK Shah classes textbook. And uh, sometimes, you know, they can also ask you theory in any of your sub questions as well. So guys, please make sure that you are doing your theory also adequately. Capital structure, my dear students, can come as one of the questions in your compulsory question and which can be asked for 5 marks. So guys, be very thorough with the revision of this particular chapter. So guys, let us start now with this particular revision series. First of all, let me tell you that in this particular revision, the basic objective is to cover the maximum concepts in the least possible time. And uh, we are not going to leave any particular concept as an option here. We are going to revise everything. So keep your JK Shah classes material with you. And if you are not having the same, you can just check it on the screen also and uh, we'll be I'll be displaying you the material I'll be displaying all the questions also and we'll be quickly revising the concepts one by one so guys as you all are aware that capital structure basically means what it means your arrangement of capital right so there are three basic decisions which a CFO has to make and the first decision making is nothing but capital structure that is how to raise the capital and this particular chapter will address the issue about how to raise your capital from multiple sources. Now, as you all are aware that companies are going to raise the capital by issuing equity shares, by issuing preference shares, by issuing debentures. So what should be the structure of it? That is something which we are going to revise in this particular chapter. Guys, the basic objective of every decision making is to maximize the wealth of equity shareholders. That's why there will be multiple plans, there will be multiple proposals available with you for the purpose of raising capital and we will be selecting a particular proposal, we will be selecting a particular plan in which your earning per share is going to be maximum. Yes, my dear students. So, how are we going to select a particular financial plan in capital structure when you will be having multiple financial plans available with you and you have to select the best possible financial plan in such a way that your earning per share will be your maximum. And guys, if your P /E ratio is given in the question, then we will select the financial plan on the basis of which the market price per share of a particular financial plan is maximum. So guys, this chapter is actually divided into three main parts. The first part is going to be your selection of a financial plan. The second part will be your calculation of indifference point and your third part will be your calculation of financial break-even point. So guys, the first part which is nothing but selection of a financial plan, as I was telling you that there will be multiple financial plans given to you on different different components that what should be the quantum of equity share, what should be the quantum of preference share, what should be the quantum of debentures and which financial plan you are going to select, the financial plan in which your earning per share is going to be maximum because as I told you that a CFO is going to always make decisions in such a way that the wealth of equity shareholders should be maximized. 
and guys when the P ratio will be given to you. So we will be selecting a financial plan on the basis of which the market price is going to be maximum because ultimately equity shareholders wealth maximization is the basic objective. Guys when we are going to revise the second part which is nothing but calculation of indifference point. What is the basic meaning of indifference point? Indifference point is nothing but that level of EBIT in which your EPS is going to remain the same. So guys if suppose you have two plans in front of you plan A let's say for example has debt and equity both in its capital structure plan B let's say for example has only equity in the capital structure then my dear students we need to calculate that level of EBIT in which you will be indifferent in selection of any one of the financial plan. Now that is only possible when your EPS is going to remain the same. Similarly my dear students when we are going to revise the third part which is nothing but financial break even point. What is the basic meaning of break even point? Break even point my dear students means what? That there is no profit no loss and whenever we are talking about financial break even point it is nothing but no profit no loss for equity shareholders. So we need to calculate what is the level of EBIT in which your equity shareholders break even it means that your EPS should be zero. So guys this particular part will be revising in the third part that is nothing but calculation of your financial break even point. So guys as you can see in this particular capital structure the scope of this chapter will be divided into three main parts that is how to select the financial plan that can be either on the basis of EPS or MPS. So guys if P ratio is given to you then we will definitely calculate the MPS by taking EPS into P ratio. So that will actually give you your market price per share and then the selection will be done on the basis of market price per share and will be selecting a financial plan in which the MPS is going to be higher. If there is no PE ratio then we will be selecting the financial plan in which your EPS is going to be higher. What is your indifference point? It is that level of EBIT in which your EPS is going to be same between any two financial plans your EPS will be same. So that will be the level of EBIT in which your EPS will be same so you will be okay with any particular financial plan. And what is your financial break even level? It is nothing but that level of your EBIT in which your EPS is going to be zero. So basically your equity shareholders are going to break even. So now my dear students let's continue further with the revision of the questions. So your question number one first of all is your extremely basic and your very easy question about how to select a particular financial plan and then what will be your indifference point and what will be your financial break even point. So all the three parts is going to be covered in this particular question. So I would also here give you some of the questions which you should definitely visit one day before the examination and one of them is your question number one which you should definitely take a look one day before your examination because in this particular question all the three types of the chapter is going to be covered. Now as you can see in this particular question 4 lakh rupees will be needed and to raise this particular 4 lakhs we have two financial plans available. Your first financial plan has debt amounting to 2 lakhs and equity share capital amounting to 2 lakhs and in the second part we will be raising the entire 4 lakh rupees by issue of equity share capital. So guys we have summary of financial plans available in which there are two plans plan 1 has debt equity in the capital structure your plan 2 has only equity in the capital structure. Then guys they have given to you different levels of EBIT. So your first level of EBIT is 70,000. Whenever you see a question on capital structure you should first try and prepare the income statement. The format for which will be you will be starting with your EBIT from which you will be subtracting your interest you will be getting your EBT then you will be subtracting your tax then you will be getting your MPAT then from this profits you will be first giving your preference dividend and then my dear students you will be having your net profit for equity shareholders. To this we will divide by number of equity shares and we will be getting your EPS. Now this is something which you have to do for your plan 1 and plan 2 
at level of EBIT of 70,000 rupees and you will be calculating the EPS. Similarly, my dear students, you will also do the same for plan 1 and plan 2 when the level of EBIT will be 80,000 rupees and then you will be selecting the particular financial plan in which your EPS is going to be maximum. So guys, a very straightforward question, a very basic question. You just have to fill in the figures in this particular format of the income statement and you will be getting the EPS. Then my dear students, you are required to calculate your indifference point. So guys, indifference point is nothing but that level of EBIT in which your EPS is going to be the same. So how do you calculate that level of EBIT? So for that, we will be writing down the formula that is nothing but EBIT minus interest into 1 minus tax minus preference dividend if any divide that by number of equity shares and this should be equal to your EBIT minus interest into 1 minus tax minus preference dividend upon number of equity shares. So guys here we have to calculate that level of EBIT. So we need to calculate the indifference point between plan 1 and plan 2 in such a way that your EPS should be same. So we will take your EBIT as X and then we will be filling up all the figures here and then we will be calculating your level of EBIT in which your EPS will be the same. Guys after you get the level of EBIT then you also need to verify the same. Now this verification is actually not necessarily to be done in a particular question until and unless specifically asked. But my advice to you would be that after you calculate your indifference point, you should always check that whether that indifference point is correct or not and for that you will prepare a verification table. So what will be your verification table? You will again prepare the income statement in such a way that your EPS should be coming the same for that particular level of EBIT. And in this particular question, they have also mentioned verify the same. So that is why we need to prepare the income statement again at that level of EBIT in which your EPS is going to remain constant. It is going to remain the same for both the financial plans. And guys, for the purpose of calculation of financial break-even point. Now, what is your financial break-even point? It is nothing but that level of EBIT at which your equity shareholders break even. It means that you will be recovering your fixed financial cost. What are the two types of fixed financial cost? The first one is your interest and the second one is your preference dividend. So guys, your financial break-even point can be calculated by taking interest plus preference dividend and this we have to divide it by 1 minus tax. Now that is because your preference dividend is always nothing but distribution of the profits after your tax component. So that is why to check that what should be your minimum level of EBIT which will help you to earn your interest which will help you to pay your taxes and distribute your preference dividend we always gross it up by dividing it by 1 minus tax. So that is how your level of indifference point your level of financial break even point will be calculated by using this particular formula that is nothing but interest plus preference dividend upon 1 minus tax. Continuing further my dear students. Now let us go to your question number 2. In this question number 2 also, the only difference here in this particular question is that we already have some equity share capital readily available with the company and now the company is planning to diversify, the company wants to expand for which it needs additional funds. So here you have to be very careful while selection of a financial plan because in your EBIT component, you will not only take the existing EBIT which the company is earning pre-expansion but you also have to add to the additional EBIT which the company will earn after your expansion process. So that is how the total EBIT will be calculated. So to make you understand this in much better way you can just check that existing EBIT which the company is earning is rupees 60 lakhs okay and the company is further planning to expand which will give you an EBIT further of rupees 40 lakhs. So my dear students, now the total EBIT after expansion will be nothing but your 60 plus 40 and that is nothing but 100 lakhs and this 100 lakhs EBIT you have to take into consideration for different types of financial plans. And then we have to prepare the income statement in the same format 
divide that by number of equity shares will be getting the EPS. Now while considering the number of equity shares, we have to consider not only the fresh issue which is being made by the company, but we should also consider the old equity shares, the existing number of equity shares which the company already has in its capital structure. Now in this particular question, the company has already some 10 lakh ordinary shares and then you can just check that in which of the financial plans further fresh issue is being made and that fresh issue needs to be added to the existing number of equity shares and your total number of equity shares can be calculated. So here in plan A you can just check that we are going to issue equity share capital for the entire additional amount. Now what is the entire additional amount? The company wants to raise 50 lakh rupees. Now guys this 50 lakh rupees which needs to be raised that particular 50 lakh rupees we are going to raise by the way of issue of equity shares for the first plan and that equity shares will always be issued at the issue price which is given to you in the question. Now what is the issue price which they have told you that the face value is 10 and it can be sold at a premium of 15. So 10 plus 15 that is nothing but your face value was 10 rupees and we are issuing that at a premium of rupees 15. So guys your issue price will be 25. So whenever you are going to raise 50 lakh rupees that 50 lakh rupees needs to be divided by 25 which is nothing but the issue price which will give you the fresh issue number of equity shares. Then in the second plan we are not issuing any equity shares but we are raising the entire amount by way of issue of debentures and in the third part we have the combination of equity and the debt in the capital structure and there is a premium of rupees 40 each which is given to you. So your issue price will now become 10 plus 40 that is nothing but 50 which will help you to calculate the new number of equity shares. So guys just in this particular question the point of highlight here is that the company already has some existing number of equity shares to which we are going to add fresh issue and that's how your total will be calculated. Then my dear students coming to your question number 3. Your question number 3 has again the same concept about how to raise your particular capital under what of the financial plans which is given to you. We will definitely select a particular financial plan in which your EPS is going to be maximum and guys when you have such kind of data available in this particular question you need 25 lakh rupees and your EBIT is also given to you as rupees 5 lakhs. So guys it's very simple that you will start your income statement with the EBIT of rupees 5 lakhs from which you will be subtracting interest and then you will be preparing the income statement. But here there are three options available to raise debt by 2 lakh 50 or 10 lakh or 15 lakhs. So guys whatever amount is required as in the first part you can see that 25 lakh rupees is required out of which debt is 2 lakh 50 thousand. So your balance part will be nothing but by the way of equity share capital. So there will be a combination of debt and equity for every financial plans. There will be three financial plans. Your first plan will have debt of 2 lakh 50. Your equity will be 20 to 50. Your second plan will have debt of rupees 10 lakhs. Your equity will be 15 lakhs. And in the third plan, your debt will be rupees 15 lakhs and your equity will be 10 lakhs. Guys, the highlight of this particular question will be how will you calculate your interest component. So as you can just check in this particular question, they have told you that the funds can be borrowed at the rate of 10% up to rupees 2 lakh 50, 15% for 2 lakh 50 and up to 10 lakhs and 20% over and about 10 lakhs. So guys here we have to calculate interest on the basis of slabs. When you are taking the loan which is only up to the extent of 2 lakh 50 thousand, your interest will be directly charged on that 2 lakh 50. But guys in the second plan when you will be taking a loan of 10 lakh rupees then in that particular part your interest will be calculated as follows where 2 lakh 50 thousand will be at the rate of 10 percent and the balance 7 and a half lakhs you will be raising it at the interest cost of 15 percent. And then guys over and about 10 lakhs so in the third plan when you are raising a debt of 15 lakh rupees the balance 5 lakhs will be raised at 20 percent rate of interest. So that's how my dear students your income statement will be prepared and your EPS will be calculated. So guys this question only your interest component I would like you to revise one day before the examination that how the calculation of interest is being made. Moving forward to the next question here also in your question number 4 you have to raise 60 lakh rupees 
and guys there are two options available and in this particular case we just have to calculate indifference point so guys a very easy question about how to calculate your indifference point here your EBIT will not be given to you so you have to calculate that EBIT so let that EBIT be X and then we have two financial plans available in the first plan we are raising it entirely by the way of equity share capital the second plan will be have debt and equity both in the capital structure so your 60 lakh rupees which is required two third of that will be your debt which will be 40 lakhs and your 20 lakhs will be nothing but equity share capital so guys in this particular case you have to calculate your indifference point and this part is already covered in your first question so it's okay if you don't revise this one day before your examination a very easy question about how to calculate indifference point in this question as you can see that you don't have any verification table which is asked in the question but as I told you that you should prepare your verification table so that you will come to know that EPS between both the plans is going to be the same and your answer will also be verified coming to question number five this particular question I would like you to revise one day before the examination in this particular question you all can just check that there are three plans available and you require 2 lakh rupees your plan A only has equity of 100% so your entire 2 lakh rupees will be raised by the way of equity share capital your plan B has 1 lakh of equity and 1 lakh of debt and your plan C will have 1 lakh of equity and 1 lakh of preference share capital guys the best part about this question is that cost of debt and cost of preference shares both are 8 percent so guys whenever the cost of debt and cost of preference shares both are same your amount which is supposed to be raised that is also same so in this particular case your 1 lakh rupees is going to be raised by the way of debt your 1 lakh rupees will be raised by the way of preference share capital so we have to pay 8000 interest and we have to pay 8000 preference dividend obviously a CFO will prefer raising capital by the way of debt over preference shares because your debt component will have interest element which is subject to tax savings and the same tax savings is not available in case of preference shares so what I want to try and make you understand here is that when we have debt and preference shares both and we have to select anything between the two where the cost is same the amount to be raised is same then your debt will always dominate your preference shares because your debt will have an interest element which is subject to tax savings which is not possible in case of preference shares so guys in this particular question they have told you that equity shares of rupees 10 will be issued at a premium of rupees 10 per share so that's why your issue price will now become 20 so this will help you to calculate your number of equity shares and then guys we have the EBIT also available as 80,000 this question also has three parts the first part is we are required to calculate the EPS and select a particular financial plan so guys how will you calculate your EPS simply by preparing the income statement starting with the EBIT of rupees 80,000 this question you need to revise it properly because in this particular question we also have preference shares so in your income statement from your NPAT we have to subtract preference dividend for your plan C and then we'll calculate the EPS and select the plan in which the EPS is going to be maximum guys to calculate the financial break-even point your plan A will definitely have the financial break-even point zero because there is no debt there is no preference shares in the capital structure so there is no need to earn your fixed financial cost so that's why your EBIT will become your zero for your plan B your financial break-even point will be restricted to the interest amount which you have to earn and for your plan C your financial break-even point will be whatever is going to be your preference dividend you have to divide that by one minus tax and gross it up and that will give you your amount of the compulsory preference dividend which needs to be earned okay then my dear students in the third part we are required to check if any of the plans dominate and you are required to calculate EBIT range now when you will be calculating the indifference point of three financial plans you will be first doing the indifference point between plan A and plan B then you'll be doing the indifference point between plan A and plan C and then while doing the indifference point between plan B and plan C you will very soon realize that there is no indifference point which can be calculated between plan B and plan C now that's because plan B will dominate your plan C and why your plan B is going to dominate your plan C 
is because plan B has some interest element debited in the PNL account which will lead to your tax savings and the same is not possible for your plan C because plan C has preference dividend. So that's why plan B will always dominate that is nothing but debt will always dominate your preference shares yes or no yes because of the tax savings on interest which you get on the same. Moving forward my dear students your question number 6 in this particular question we have price earning ratio and here the selection of the financial plan will not be done on the basis of EPS. So this in our book is actually our first question where the selection of the financial plan will be made on the basis of MPS and not on the basis of EPS. So here the format will be the same. We will be calculating the amount of EPS first and then whatever is the EPS available will multiply the same by the P ratio to get the market price per share. So guys in this particular question we have some existing capital structure available and as you all can see the total of this existing capital structure is nothing but 1 crore rupees and the company is already earning 12 percent. So can I say 12 lakh rupees is nothing but the existing earnings of the company. Now the company needs 25 lakh rupees. So guys whenever such kind of questions come be very careful that here we have existing capital employed as well as some additional capital employed also. So while calculating your EPS we have to take into consideration the total EBIT of the company and while calculating the number of equity shares it will be having a component of old plus new both. Similarly in your income statement when you will be subtracting your interest and when you will be subtracting your preference dividend make sure that you are having your old interest as well as new interest which is there in your plan 3. Similarly while subtracting your preference dividend make sure that you are having old preference share capital and the new preference share capital which is going to be taking into consideration for your plan 2. So my dear students whenever you have such kind of question where there is old and new both just be very careful that in your income statement preparation you subtract not only your new interest and new preference share capital but you also subtract whatever is the old interest and old preference share capital because both of them will be forming part of your capital employed. Now my dear students once you get the EPS we just need to multiply that by the PE ratio we will be getting the market price of all the three financial plans and then we will be selecting the financial plan in which your MPS is going to be maximum. Guys in this particular case they have told you that further 25 lakh rupees will be needed. So guys now your total capital employed will be your combination of old capital employed which is 1 crore plus your new additional capital which is 0.25 crores. So now your total capital employed will be 1.25 crores which will be multiplying by 12 percent to get the new EBIT and that's how your income statement will start. Then my dear students this question also question number 6 I would want you to just go through it one day before the examination. Moving forward with your question number 7 in this particular question my dear students your this is an extension of your previous question only but in this particular question we don't have the existing capital employed readily available nor do we have the rate at which we are going to earn some operating profits. In the previous question as you can check we have the capital employed of 1 crore which was the existing capital employed and we were having the rate also readily available. In this particular question first we need to calculate what is going to be your capital employed and what is going to be the rate at which you are existing earning a particular EBIT and that rate will be applied for the additional funds as well. So just to make you understand in much better way we have this EBIT available as rupees 18 lakhs from which we are subtracting the interest. So we will be having 16 lakh 87,500 which is nothing but your EBT and then guys they have not continued with the income statement. So my request to you is you will be preparing first the existing income statement where you will be starting with whatever is your EBIT, you will be subtracting your interest, you will be getting your EBT, then you will be subtracting your tax, you will be getting your NPAT. There is no preference share capital in this question. We will divide simply this NPAT by your number of equity shares we will be getting the EPS. And guys once you have the existing data available. Once we have the existing EPS available then we can calculate the PE ratio 
by taking your market price per share upon your earning per share. So your MPS in this particular question is 109.7 and whatever is your EPS will be dividing that EPS with this particular market price per share to get the P ratio. If you guys can just check with the solutions your P ratio in this particular question will be nothing but 10 times and then my dear students there is one further application of debt equity ratio which will help you to determine what should be the PE ratio post expansion. So I'll come back to that particular point. But first of all, in this question, you have to first complete the existing income statement, calculate the EPS, calculate the existing PE ratio, and you can also calculate your existing capital employed. So your existing capital employed will be having three components. That is nothing but your equity share capital, your reserves and surplus, and then you'll be having some debt in your capital structure. So that will give you your existing capital employed. Now how would we come to know? See, do you have number of equity shares? Yes, 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each. So definitely we have existing equity share capital of 10 lakhs. Then we have some reserves of 12 lakh rupees. And then guys, we also have to calculate your debt. But guys, for your debt component, they have told you that the interest is 1 lakh 12,500. So now you have to go reverse to calculate the amount of debt. But mind you in this particular question, you have this particular interest only for the period of 9 months because these debentures were issued 3 months after the commencement of the year. So this particular interest is only for 9 months. So we have to now work reverse, calculate your interest for 12 months first and then once you have the interest on per annum basis, will that help you to calculate the amount of loan come on yes or no? Yes. And once you have the amount of loan available, that will be forming part of your debt and that will give you your total capital employed. And guys, anyway, you have your EBIT also available here. So can you calculate your return on capital employed? Come on, yes or no? Yes, your return on capital employed, as you all know, is nothing but EBIT upon capital employed into 100. So what is going to be your return on capital employed? That same percentage will also apply for the new funds which you are going to raise which will also help you to calculate your new EBIT. So after you calculate this particular return on capital employed, you will be at par with just like your previous question and then rest all things are going to be the same. In this question, my dear students, one more additional point here is that if your debt equity ratio, if it is higher than 60%, will cause the PE ratio to come down by 25%. So only this adjustment, my dear students, you can revise it one day before your examination because you are anyway revising that particular previous question. So in this particular question, we just have to see the additional component that is nothing but regarding how do we determine the P ratio. So guys, they have told you that the debt equity ratio for which they have defined, it is nothing but debt upon debt plus equity. So guys, if your debt equity ratio, that is the component of debt in your total capital employed, if it exceeds, they have told you, if it is higher than 60%. So if this exceeds 60%, then my dear students, your P ratio will come down by 25%. So my dear students, here in this particular case, after you have raised the additional financials, what you need to do is, we just have to calculate the debt equity ratio for plan 1, we need to calculate the debt equity ratio for plan 2 and check whether we are exceeding 60% or not. If after expansion, your debt equity ratio or your component of debt in your total capital employed, if it exceeds 60%, then my dear students, your P ratio will fall by 25%. It means your P ratio will become 10 minus 25%. That is nothing but 7.5 times. So in that particular plan where your debt component exceeds 60% of the total capital employed, in that particular case, whatever will be your EPS, you will multiply that by the P ratio of seven and a half times. But in this particular question, as you have already solved this in the class, you have realized that the debt equity ratio in neither of the financial plan exceeds your 60% and hence your P ratio continues to be 10 times for both the financial plans. And guys, then we'll be calculating the market price per share and we will be selecting the plan in which your MPS is going to be higher, okay? Now, my dear students, also at the same time, we have to understand that while 
preparing the new financial statement while preparing the new income statement when we will be subtracting the interest component the interest year will be on the basis of old interest for full year and also your new interest for full year because only in the very first year you can just check that the debentures were issued three months later but guys in subsequent years the interest will always be on per annum basis so this is where students make maximum mistake that while preparing the new income statement they will just take the interest for three months but which is not correct you have to take the interest for full year for both old as well as new and then calculate the income statement accordingly okay after this my dear students we have question number eight which deals with whether we should convert the bonds into shares or not now my dear students this conversion of bonds into shares is only and only possible when the market price of equity share is going to be higher so concept is very clear that here we are having some bonds in the capital structure so we have to think whether we should convert this bond into equity shares or not so for that what we need to do is we have to calculate the market price of equity share before conversion and we need to calculate the market price of equity share after conversion guys if the market price of equity share after conversion if it is higher then should we convert the bond into equity shares come on yes or no yes sir so in this particular question you have p ratios available here the p ratio before redemption is given to us 20 times so what does this mean my dear students that if we don't convert the debentures and if we continue to pay our debenture holders interest we'll be enjoying your tax savings then we'll be getting the eps to which we'll be multiplying by the p ratio to get the market price per share so we will first calculate the market price per share before conversion then my dear students if we have converted the debentures into equity shares we'll be definitely not paying the interest your ebit level is going to be the same and then we'll be preparing the income statement and calculate the market price post conversion and guys if your market price post conversion is higher as compared to the pre conversion then should we convert the bonds into equity shares come on yes or no then the answer is yes sir okay coming to question number 9 which is actually a very massive question and in this particular question there are five levels of ebit which are given to you 60 to 500 1 lakh 25 2 lakh 50 3 lakh 75 6 lakh 25000 guys in this particular question we need to first calculate the eps under each of the three financial plans on this five levels of ebit so basically what i'm talking about here is you have to calculate 15 eps in this particular question how many eps needs to be calculated your 15 eps needs to be calculated so guys first we'll be selecting let's say for example the company is raising the entire 31 lakh 25000 only by equity shares so guys we'll be preparing the format something like this if we will raise only by equity shares then we are having different levels of ebit like 60 to 500 then 1 lakh 25 then 2 lakh 50 then we are having 3 lakh 75000 and then the last one is 6 lakh 25 so guys this will be nothing but the different level of ebit to this we have to subtract interest and prepare the income statement and we'll be calculating your eps and guys the same income statement format we have to apply it for plan 2 as well as for plan 3 guys the crux of this question will be that when you will be solving your interest part it is possible that in any of the financial plan there can be a negative ebit now students usually have a doubt sir if you have a negative ebit how do we approach now my dear students let's say for example while solving your debentures part that is if, if suppose you are raising your financial plan with the help of your debentures if this is 62,500 and suppose there is a loss which is coming here so in that particular loss we don't have to pay the tax we will save the tax so here we are not going to subtract the tax rather whatever is going to be the tax savings we will add it because such kind of loss we assume will be set off from current year profits or it can be set off in subsequent years so that is why what will happen here is that whatever is the loss part that will actually lead to your tax savings and whenever there is tax savings we don't subtract it we will add it to the component of your loss and then we'll be getting the net profit for equity shareholders 
will be dividing that by number of equity shares to get the EPS. So sometimes my dear students remember that while preparing the income statement if you find that your EBT is in negative you don't have to subtract the tax but rather you will add the tax savings part on that particular component and then you will be getting the net profit for equity shareholders which will be dividing by number of equity shares and it is very much possible that in any of the financial plans there can be a negative EPS as well but it's okay if there is negative EPS we will continue with the same but definitely we will not select such kind of financial plan okay so while calculating preference shares it is very much possible that you will be getting sometimes in particular level of EBIT a negative net profits available for equity shareholders we will divide that by number of equity shares we will be getting EPS in negative of course we will keep that negative as it is but while comparing between the financial plans we will definitely not invest in the plan in which your EPS is going to be negative. So that is going to be your first part of the question that is you are required to calculate your EPS under all these three financial plans so there will be 15 EPS which needs to be calculated in total then which alternative would you recommend. So guys then you have to prepare a conclusion table where at different levels of EBIT like 60 to 500, 1 lakh 25, 2 lakh 50, 3 lakh 75 and your 6 lakh 25,000 you will be having your plan 1, plan 2 and plan 3 and guys we will be calculating your EPS for all these particular parts we will be writing down the EPS which we have calculated in the first part in all these particular plans and then very soon you will realize that plan 3 will not be selected at all between plan 1 and plan 2 we will select the plan in which your EPS is going to be maximum okay so guys while solving this you will realize that at 250,000 the EPS between plan 1 and plan 2 will be the same which also means that the indifference point between plan 1 and plan 2 is 250,000 and when your EBIT is above your indifference point or let us say if your EBIT is below your indifference point then we will select the financial plan in which your financial break even point will be lower. So now my dear students I am revising the concept of how to compare financial break even point your indifference point and your EBIT. So guys if your financial break even point is lower now what should be done for the same now suppose your expected EBIT is let's say for example lower than your indifference point if your expected EBIT is lower than your indifference point then we should select a particular financial plan in which your financial risk is lower your financial risk is lower means what your financial break even point is lower if your financial break even point is lower it means that your financial risk is lower and if your financial risk is lower your EPS will be higher in such a situation but guys when your financial break even point is higher now if your expected EBIT is greater than your indifference point if your expected EBIT is greater than your indifference point then in such situations we select the plan in which your financial break even point will be higher and in such components your EPS is also going to be higher. Now just to prove this point at 2,50,000 you must have solved you would have realized that your EPS is coming the same for plan 1 and plan 2. So 2,50 is your indifference point you are okay with any of the financial plans but if suppose your EBIT is lower than indifference point then of course we should select a particular plan in which your financial break even point is lower in that the EPS will be higher and very soon you will realize that plan 1 which only has equity in the capital structure that particular plan will have a lower financial break even point because there is no debt and there is no preference share in the capital structure so ideally your financial break even point is zero and when your EBIT is lower than indifference point then we select the plan in which financial break even point is lower your financial risk is lower your your EPS is definitely going to be higher and guys when your EBIT is more than your indifference point when your EBIT is more than your indifference point we should select the financial plan in which your 
EPS is going to be higher, your financial break even point is going to be higher. So here you can just check that plan 2 has debt component in the capital structure. So definitely your financial break even point will be higher and henceforth your EPS is also higher. So guys, this is the importance level between indifference point, EBIT and financial break even point. Now the same thing is mentioned here also in your theory component where you can just read in your Jekesha classes textbook. So in this importance of indifference level and FBP, the same concept what we have done in the last question gets revised here. See what is given to you? Indifference level along with FBP helps you in selection of a particular plan. Now see what is given to you that if the expected EBIT is more than indifference point. So guys what is the situation that if your EBIT is going to be more than your indifference point then we should select the plan which has higher FBP. So we should select the plan in which the financial risk is higher. In this case your EPS will also be more. So in the question which we have just solved which we have just revised there you will understand that in your plan 2 your financial risk is higher your FBP is higher because of the component of debt in the capital structure. So in that case we are only selecting plan 2 when your level of EBIT is more than 250 which is the indifference point. So in such situation we will be selecting the plan in which the EPS will be more and then if the expected EBIT is going to be less than the indifference point then guys we will be selecting the plan in which the FBP or your financial risk will be lower in this case the EPS will be more. So that is something which you can see in your plan 1. Whenever your EBIT is less than 250,000, we are selecting a particular plan in which your financial break even point is going to be lower and there my dear students the EPS will be maximum. So that's why whenever you are going to check any level of EBIT below the indifference point means the 60 to 500 and 125. Here we will be selecting the plan in which your financial risk is going to be lower there the EPS will be higher. So that's why plan 1 which has only equity in the capital structure your FBP will be lower and if your EBIT is going to be more then your indifference point will be selecting the plan in which your financial risk will be higher here the EPS is going to be higher. Okay. So guys if the expected EBIT is equal to indifference point then we will go for any particular financial plan because here the EPS is going to be the same. Okay, so that's how my dear students we complete your classwork section and in question number 9 you can just revise you know your third part and your second part one day before your examination to just understand that what is the importance of EBIT, indifference point and FBP. So my dear students with this your revision of capital structure gets completed. I hope that uh, you know all the concepts which we have discussed right now you have understood that properly okay and uh, I just want you to just go through all the questions once and whatever questions which I have marked star or the important adjustments please refer to that one day before the examination as well. So this will really help you to cover up all the concepts regarding this particular chapter. So guys I hope you have found this particular lecture effective that's it from my end thank you so much bye bye all the best.